What's up guys? This is the Rifeman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Title War Let's Play as Great Britain. And as you remember, when we left off, we were going to be ambushed by the Pueblo Nations, which we still are. Um, but I have a bit of something to explain. So, as you all know, Russia screws with my campaign. And if I completely destroy Russia in this particular campaign, the save file crashes, so I've had to pull back from Ufa and make peace. And this seems relatively stable. We can load up to this point and things aren't uh, things aren't at risk so all we're going to do is ah yes a few of our armies have been smashed from uh, auto resolve battles so i'm going to keep some armies a handful of armies here just to jump on ufa when the time comes and also just to stop the uh, stop the russians from getting up to no good. So I'm going to move up to the border with a couple of troops just to make sure that they can't do any so make, they can't give us any surprises. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's where we have to leave it. But where we were um, is over here. So I wonder what happens if we do so declare war on the Pueblo Nations again. They've got no allies. Oh no! But part of the reason why this is probably going to backfire on them somewhat is that we're only going to be ambushed by these two units the re the army here is going to come in as reinforcements so they're not going to be ambushing us so let's crack on and engage the native forces here a um, bit of a bummer but what that does mean is that i can well i can attack uh ufa again well i could potentially attack ufa again right at the end of the campaign or i can just leave it because i've already defeated them once in spirit Okay, yeah, so get our cavalry up front. So enemy reinforcements are coming in from there, so let's get our cavalry to commit to battle. Uh, howitzers get them out of the line to deploy Curacier can focus on the medicine men being the more um, elite unit we've killed their general so the guns are going to go over here in a large formation so that means the remaining three infantry units here can pull out to around about here. The medicine men have been shattered. So let's get one cavalry unit over onto the onto the left flank, get, get cavalry over onto the right flank. And there we go, how it is in position. Actually let's make you guys run through the line, then run across. Chief's bodyguards potentially going to cause some grief for my colonial dragoons. Some of them have been caught, but let's bring my cuirassier up as well to face them. But what we can do, because the enemy are reinforcing, is we can advance. And those bowmen won't stand up to us. Okay, so my line. Let's push my line up. Those are the musketmen. They came back from the. Well, they weren't. They were never routing, but they uh, they've come back. So get my other artillery unit to make ready. Yeah, this is why that that interception actually wasn't necessarily the best plan for the Pueblo nations because an ambush from the from the entire army. Sure, that's a big deal, but their reinforcements coming in one at a time. They weren't quite the same, didn't have the same um, punch as they were going for. So the my artillery back here. Unlimber and just start lobbing in round shot from range. All the while my, ch my general's bodyguard's not been doing anything. OK, 
Okay, the warrior societies are coming in now. So they are what we want to be careful of. Oh, that's right, Hessian Grenadiers. Looking spectacular. This is a game that this is a unit that is within the base game if you've got the Heroes of the Americas DLC. Pouring fire into the native troops. Score Marines reload. Serpentine! Serpentine! So I would like to chase them down, but there's a risk there in running my cavalry towards where the enemy are reinforcing. I would like to try and kill their general. It's taking some time. My Dragoons are paying for it. But let's take my line here that currently doesn't have a roll. We may well be running into some melee action over here, but that's I'm okay with that. So my Curassier get back to the fight. My Colonial Dragoons can chase down the Chief's bodyguard. Curassier hit the Warrior Society that's pushing around the flank, push up my pikemen to support them. My general can be blissfully unaware of what's going on. <laughs> yeah, Bowman, Warrior Society, Bowman. Ah, there we go, those chaps have shattered immediately. So then this line advance. Medicine men have been pushed back. Native garrison warriors are being pushed back. The bowmen are upset. Yeah, it really wasn't the uh, best outcome for the Pueblo nations here intercepting me. Not my howitzers are engaging, but there's nothing. There's no one left to engage apart from these garrison bow units. Make ready, Marines. Yeah, and the artillery's coming in. Redeploy all my artillery there. My general can charge in to knock out. Nope, doesn't have to knock in to charge out. Doesn't have to charge in to knock out anyone. Get out of the way, General Staff, or else you'll get shot down. Warrior Society's on their way, but let's let them... Actually, let's just charge my Curacier in. We know they're more than capable, especially as they're already wavering. Ceasefire the artillery. Oh, there we go. They broke anyway. Garrison native bowmen are going to get mowed down by musketry. Yeah, that's the end of them. Tactical error in intercepting me, Pueblo Nations. Very, 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 very much so. But nevertheless, we haven't actually taken the city yet, but we've pushed away that army and also the garrison. So we can. Send my guys to continue to replenish and then march on to Texas and then let's go knock out the remaining garrison. Then this army, once they've refitted, they can also march north towards the Black Hills to capture that interior territory, which is one of the ones, it's one of the territories that always lasts until the end because there's no point in going for it. It's not particularly wealthy, it's not particularly critical. At least not in the current not in the current instance of the campaign. If there was a bit more of a you know, in US interior that you had to capture that to go through, then maybe. But let's get my garrison let's get my um I mean those are fusiliers, they aren't melee troops, but they are better than my infantry. But let's create a heavy infantry corps. And then push 
my regular line units up around the flanks. Group my weaker cavalry together on one flank. Send my pikes up the centre. General with them. Looks like the left flank, they're going to, uh, not abandon, but they're going to, ooh, both of my howitzers are focusing on the same unit. Let's re-target some of that howitzer fire. And the guns as well. See, you guys don't actually have a shot. At the men at the top of the hill. These guys, however, they have an excellent shot. So the armed tribesmen are standing there waiting for their comrades to get into position. But no, they've both broken. Take our right flank and push it up redirect all our artillery to work on them throw in our heavy cavalry to start to try and attack some of these routing units I mean I was anticipating getting into a bit more of a brawl in the centre You have to st stand your ground and engage the bowmen. Ah, hey, you're reloading. Push up. So that's the unit that's not that's not shattered. Oh, they're both shattered. Oh, I think that might be the end of it. <laughs> yep, superior late game firepower, and the native factions aren't anything to worry about. Whereas in the early game, they're very much something to worry about. There we go. We lost three men in the capture of Villa de Bex Bexar. Bexar, Bahar. So you men replenish. Upgrade the cotton plantation. Let's dismantle the communal farming because you can't go any further with it in the Native American um, tech tree. Whereas our farming does get better. Let's move my preacher. Well, to be honest, we've got no religious problems here. So let's just move him down south towards Mexico. But yeah, this army's going to replenish and go north. And there's probably, yeah. Uh, Hillary Stanley. Embark aboard your ship. All aboard the sloop Southampton. Sail up to the Inuit. And then land your army off the coast. You stay nearby in case something really bad happens, but they're already they're depleted, so their their garrison might actually be quite weak. Meanwhile in Europe. Mr. Charlton can leave Turkey. Got a bunch of stuff that we can do. But I want to take this global trading company. Take one of my fourth rates out. Get you men aboard. And then you probably, we can make it. Sail to, sail to India, but fundamentally, I'm not going to need a lot of this firepower that I've actually got. We well, are going to deploy because that's a cool army, Mr. Ashton, with the Coldstream Guards, Marines, oh, the Sloop Bounty. Watch out for that one. And Ridley Dawes, you're less interesting. Awaiting 
Got a lot of Irish volunteers. More Irish volunteers than I can make use of, realistically. And Lancers and infantry I don't need. The chief reason I don't need them is because we've done fantastically well in India. And this army is not a fighting army that I'm pushing up. Their job is to probably garrison uh, garrison frontier towns so I can maintain my advance. And because I'm British, let's upgrade all of our tea warehouses. So I think what I want to do is do a bit of an in infrastructure check. Because we have a few battles we need, we need to fight over here. Okay, no, I don't need to worry about you. So we've got Mr. Tully against um, Sh uh, Shamro Shah. We've got Giles Brophy against Abhilash Hachante. And we've also got Oliver Charlton, who's going to siege it now, just so I don't forget, against Lahore. So we're going to take Timothy Sutton, push up to Srinagar. You're going to advance into the wilderness a bit because we want to well, to help clear the front lines. So you men attack Shamra Shah. Let's push them north. We can start to sweep the remaining Maratha troops out of India and, and they really, really, really haven't actually put much of a uh, an effort to stop us from conquering most of their territory. Which is surprising. It really is surprising. Especially compared to how we know the Mughals do get. So. Let's find high-ish ground. So we have a, a central force, including the King's Royal Regiment, to advance across the high ground. With some rangers on the flank. There's the King's Royal Regiment of New York on the flank. Then we're going to send a splinter force with two units of mercenaries, plus Fraser's Rangers, to push round the left. And they will get the bulk of the cavalry support. The central line will get a pike unit, and my Rangers will have a cavalry unit to protect them. Let's deploy our howitzers. So you want to push up to the higher ground pretty quick. You can see they're blasting us with shrapnel shot. Let's move our pikemen towards the centre. It looks like they are going to come after my mercenaries, which is which will be quite handy. And if they run deploy you into square if they're not going to go for my men on this flank then we can push up there's a unit of camels heading our way they're committing to fight that square Switch my howitzers to round shot and engage one unit. One unit engage the general's bodyguard, and then the other unit continue to engage the centre. Okay, I think the bad thing to do is probably to do something like that. Kandari horsemen have been knocked out, so then our flank here can advance. Pikes drive into the camel mercenaries. My American mercenaries. And my skirmishers continue around the flank with cuirassier support. As the Maratha masses are charging us. Where's the King's Royal Regiment? There they are. F 
fire! Firing across the front. Oh, they poured another volley into a unit of dervishes and that's seen them off. Pivot my line, advance my pikes up into the gap. Dervishes are in position, but my my rangers should win against the Pindari horsemen, but let's give them a gun to help out. Okay, that's the bulk of their force gone. Let's push up quite aggressively. Let's see if we can induce this unit of Hindu musketeers to abandon their position on the flank. Rangers engage the Pindari horsemen. My light cavalry are acting as decoys, more or less. And the artillery is landing in there. Get my colonial light in the mix. There's a unit that's come back. Okay, so who do, who do I want to focus? Let's get that unit of Islamic swordsmen. Yeah, that Campbell unit was never going to last too long. Artillery fire, ceasefire. Let's try to see if we can get our cavalry to commit. We're going to continue. So the rangers, ceasefire. There we go. So just attack as many as we can. The more we kill, the more they will disperse northward. Dervishes, hillmen, dervishes, artillery. Just go after the armed peasantry. It's not really the ideal thing to kill, but that's still something's better than nothing. This is the last unit left, I think. Well, except for, except for those guys. No, they're going to escape. So everyone go after this landless rabble best they can. I think we got him. Yeah, we got him, alright. Nice. So then that's the, the southern... The southern bank of Nir Narun now covered. So you can advance to the S bend. Advance to the S bend. So you men recruit an East India Company infantry unit while holding the bridge. It's probably going to come from a Maidabad. Actually, I'm just going to give you one. You men boost. The strength of this force and the Jaws Bertie. We've also got to push in near per Persia. I mean, I might just auto you. I don't know what you've got. Chaff. Victory. March. So you men push up to secure the fort. Mr. Hardy, you have to do a bit more punishment, but can you leave? Would I pour? You can. So let's do some repairs. So you men push up to try and surround this force and drive them east of the river. You actually have a long goal to push up to that bridge. Now here at Hindustan, depending on if they can leave. Their role will be to push for the bridge to towards Kabul. 
if Miss Tasket can leave a Kabarabad. Which he can! Good stuff. The new men secure this bridge ahead of our troops. And then one thing we do have to do is take Miss Charlton. Let's attack Lahore. They have no fortifications. They have no defences. We have reinforcements. No doubt we'll need them. Some quite elite Sikh warrior units here. Probably leftovers from earlier battles. But yes, let's capture Lahore in northwestern India. And I mean, we are, we are really close to finishing this campaign. There are not many territories left to fight. T territories left to conquer slash enemies left to fight. Hmm. Gotta stop trying to uh, condense sentences together like that. They clearly don't make sense a good chunk of the time. But yes, this should be this should be a good battle. Because they have no actual defences. So my artillery is going to stay high on this high ground. This is quite a cool feature. But my guns are going to stay here. 32 pounder heavy horse howitzer is a delicious unit to have. So let's take my line infantry and my Irish volunteers. <laughs> Got some more grenadiers than more grenadiers in the line here. Okay, let's include my Highland Grenadiers into the main line. So then let's put... To be honest, the, the unit, I, I'd, probably be, I'd probably be better placed just to consider it one unit with skirmishes on the flanks. Including the Connaught Rangers with their blue hats. <laughs> Highlander Warband are going to sit behind the two units combined. Put the bulk of my heavy cavalry on the left, put a Royal Cressier Guard on the right. General can watch from that pretty cool position. I mean, all of you focus on that unit of Lancers. If we can gobble up a unit, an enemy... Um, cavalry unit early on that will prevent them from interfering with our advance too much but let's begin our advance you men use the cover of the huts Connor Rangers are engaging the Lancers at range. Bring up my cavalry. Okay, let's get my howitzers to work on the enemy mortars. Horse Grand Air Guards are going to have something to say about you, men. Fire! How else to try and knock out their mortars? Really want to knock out that. I don't know why I'm being so cagey about it, to be honest. So we're going to be leaving a gap in our lines. Form square because the the lancers are coming. You men pour a volley into the 124th. My gunners focus on this block of camels. You men cease fire. We'll halt uh, halt position because you know that there's going to be camels on the way. Mortars are wavering over here.
camel units being pushed back. Let's put some grenadiers in the centre. Heavy cavalry smash into the armed populace. Unfortunately, ah, oh, you did shoot one of your heavy cavalry, heavy cavalrymen brothers off the saddle. Let's pivot. So this house unit go after the Hindu warriors. You men continue to attack the garrison there. Skirmishers need to get up to the high ground. So the enemy mounted element has been annihilated. Let's form line ready to engage the Hindu musketeers. Go on, you men. We need to build up our strength. Send two units against the Firelock Arm Populace. Let's get both our howitzers to attack this block of men in the centre. Skirmishers are stable. You men form up again. we can surround and destroy this firelock arm populace unit fairly quickly just as I hope we can destroy these Hindu warriors pretty quick hopefully make them shatter charge into the Islamic swordsmen got our skirmishes to attack into the center Arm populace are done, so get my horse grenadier guards up and around the flank. My grenadiers charge the Sikh warriors, my heavy cavalry charge into the rear. You men form up in this block here to attack the armed populace. My howitzers to both attack you guys, get my field artillery to both attack the armed populace, but it looks like. Islamic swordsmen are shattered, it's now up to the Sikh warriors. Those Sikh warriors have been destroyed. Okay, all my guns engage the general's bodyguard. So these two line units. One of you push there to protect the skirmishers, the other two units both push. Where's my cavalry here? You men just kill that last Sikh musketeer, then push up, ready to try and hit Hindus musketeers. Horse grenadier guards. Attack the general's bodyguard. Royal Crusier guard go down here and attack the mortar garrison, the garrison mortar unit on the flank. So my horse grenadier guards are engaging the general's bodyguard. That unit's been wiped out. You men advance.
So my Grenadiers guards are going to hit Hindu warriors in the rear. Caught between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. <laughs> Down they go. The 104th are no more. Got my horse grenadier guards charge in to attack the mortar unit. Everyone else, the battle is com the battle is over and our aims are complete. Grenadiers pull back. 13th Regiment of Dragoons has something to say about this. Obviously, is a firelock arm populist unit that came back. My howitzer as well. Now everyone, try and engage that unit of firelock arm populist. Right, speed up time. Oh my god, everyone's coming back. General's bodyguard came back. Curacia guards are going to have something to say to these armed populist units. Skirmishes are also going to pick at the general's bodyguard as the artillery s shot slam home. Chase them down to make sure they don't come back. There we go. But that's the true end of the battle. Is the is the general is absolutely booking it, but we're going to end it there because there's no need to continue on the, the action anymore. That's an excellent capture by Oliver Charlton. Hello, Persian troops. Yeah, you can still go for Srinagar. I doubt these guys will do much. Although they are actually in good shape. Sutton advance up to the front. Newman advance up like so. Mr. Croucher. If you can leave Eugene, which you can. You can collect a... East India Company unit to bolster your strength. And you make for the Northern Bridge. So one of our spies push on to Zahedin, another of our spies push on to Afghanistan. This is the last two Maratha unit, Maratha um, positions, but then we've also got all these armies to the north. So where is the Dodd? Let's get you replenished and let's get you fixed and you fixed and the light galley fixed. Harold Williams, advance south. Mr. Mayhew can leave Astrakhan. Yes, he can. And advance. We've already got spy in Persia, but yeah, there's a lot of... Fellaheen musketeers, lots of them. Your orders, your Majesty. So, let's... First of all, well, I want a few more of these units to come south first but when we do push Mr. Wade hit Tamoris Ansari which I might do that now 
Go on, Mr. Wade. You have an incredibly elite force and you are a top class general. We can push back. Well, the we're going to be uh, pressuring Persia from the west quite strongly. We're going to be forcing them to either do battle or die. Their redoubt in Kashmir will not protect them because we will dig them out of the hills there. I mean, even my gun teams are elite. Let's form a nice battle line. Pikes in the centre ish. Favour our cavalry on the left because there's more open terrain. advance see if we can spook the 75th these two units storm up and secure the center these men can cover one of your flanks. Nah. They're pulling back. Storm, 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 attack Pattern Alpha. Let's pick battlefield targets for our gunners, although that's a very dangerously positioned set of guns. There's going to be some friendly fire here. I mean, maybe you guys ought to stand there instead. My Swiss grenadiers to pour some volley fire onto the 75th because they're already upset. Advance up here. Probably want my pikes on the flank here. And there we go, got another unit of Grenadier Guards able to pour fire. My fusiliers are going to be ready to get up and at him soon. You men form a new line there. These units are going to engage the 60th. They're surrendering their position on the left flank. Yeah, there's the first friendly fire. I think I have to keep them all firing at the same target. The unit of Feline Musketeers will not stand up to that, <laughs> to that fire. No, sir. General's bodyguard unit wandering up into the centre. Bit of a bad decision there. Yeah, they're going to rout. All my guns focus on that unit. Got a bit of a lot of friendly fire there from near misses and such. Two units going wide. <laughs> yeah, now you're advancing into the centre, into the killing fields. My 
might even push these two units up to here. There we go. Throw our heavy cavalry against them. Artillery has ceased fire. Pick two big Kizilbashi musketeer units. Hello. Keep fighting. Just do as much damage as you can. Just charging through this block of Indian troops. 75th Auto is not going to do that well. Two infantry units plus my artillery. They're not going to stand up to that because they are very fresh. Yeah, we're going to continue. So George Wade, give him a target to attack. Do as much damage as we can. Come on, if I can, you can kill those feline musketeers. I can get you to try and attack someone else. George Wade's in. I suppose it doesn't really matter who my cavalry are killing. Although... You men, there's a unit here that might be able to be killed. Yeah, but we will get the 85th. That unit's definitely going to escape because they're all spread out. So let's focus on ah, that unit also escaped. Ah, they must have escaped as well. But still, that's quite a that was a major victory. Did a huge amount of damage to the to the Persians without actually taking much damage ourselves. So in terms of experience, a couple like a regiment of horse went from two to three. Heavy cavalry went up. Lots of my, lots of them stay the same. That's part of the reason why I have my howitzers stay. Find round shots, try and get some more kills, but oh well. So they've swept them away. So Mr. Wade, how old are you? 56. And that's such a good set of general traits. There's not even, has he got any negatives? No. <laughs> he is just a fantastic general. Advance up to the front. Julian Fellows. You men stay back. Jareth Hutchinson, advance into the mountains here. Hilario Huntsman. You can advance to the hills here. And Jude Abba, advance down to the south. Julian Fellows, get back to Baghdad to maintain... Well, don't have to get in there, but maintain coverage. So it'll be George Wade. It would probably be George Wade attacking to drive them east and south. That's the way to do it, I think. Let's build a... Build a sloop to protect um, Basra. But yes, now we've recovered, now we've we've uh, successfully covered the southern edge of Naroon. Next turn, when Mr. Bertie's replenished, we can push and hit Kalachi, and then send another force on towards Zahedan. Which is pretty neat. 
I doubt you guys can leave Texas immediately. Minus 18. No, you cannot. Okay, we need to get some... Get some Dragoons over here. Pretty Ricky Tick. So we might get attacked in, up in the high north. But to be honest, there's no, there's only the high north. And do we have? No, we still don't even have Malta. After all that, Vincent Bristow. Declare war with the Knights of John. Hopefully, they don't bring Russia in. Oh no, hold on. I'm an idiot. Blockade Marsha Slock. And then we can deploy our troops. So, diplomacy. Russia. Don't be at war with us. <laughs> they join. Okay, good. So that shouldn't have screwed up anything because we're still at peace with Russia. No problems here, Russia. Let's hit end turn. In the shadows. To be honest, when my named army reaches America, we might actually just turn them around and immediately send them back to Europe because I think America is fixed. It's, it's done for. Oh, do I want to intercept this force and make them attack the city? Um, I definitely do. But looking at the timer... I think that'll probably be a good way to kick off, kick off the next episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for the destruction of another Maratha force outside the gates of Neroon. Cheers, everyone.